Hey folks, welcome to Spark. Um, I'm Josh Mollenkamp. Uh, my project is called An Ethic of Hospitality. And I'm looking at Derridian hospitality and the encounter with the other. Um, I'm going to start here with ethics. Uh, as an ethic of hospitality, uh, a definition of ethics would be uh, interactive dramas of encounter and recognition to come face to face with others, to recognize and respond to the other's call to grasp the fact that we are mutually becoming with each other. This is a great definition of ethics from the book Wild Dog Dreaming. Um, and it, it really comes down to participation in encounter with the other. And it also including there an important point of a process of mutually becoming with each other. So uh, ethics then is in that space, uh, but to, to, to look at what um, ethic a person takes toward that uh, participation in encounter, uh, one's understanding of encounter leads how they participate. So the ethic uh, that an individual has leads how uh, they participate in this world of ethics. Um, Derridian hospitality um, is uh, it comes in two parts. There's the ethical part, and then and it's intricately tied with the political part for Jack Derrida. Um, uh, it, it starts with the law of unconditional hospitality, which is to give the new arrival all of one's home and oneself without asking a name or compensation or the fulfillment of even the smallest condition. So this is an ethic that leads unconditionally towards giving oneself to the other. Uh, it's contrasted with laws in the plural, those rights and duties that are always conditioned and conditional. This is the laws of conditional hospitality. Um, for Derrida, it... Uh, this, he looks uh, at uh, not only just like laws in the political uh, in introduction with the ethical, but uh, for him is very interested in, obviously the concept of hospitality uh, invokes ideas of immigration and welcoming the stranger. Uh, there's an interdependence of unconditional and conditional hospitality for Derrida. The unconditional hospitality requires constraining in order to become action. He points out that specifying who to give to is creating a con condition for the giving of hospitality. Without it, uh, action can't be taken because it's given indiscriminately. Um, conditional hospitality also requires a purpose. Conditions serve a purpose. So uh, if they are not, if they're beginning to do something, they're, uh, they may be lifted off of their purpose um, or they may simply just not be maybe nonsensical or not exist uh, without being uh, uh, guided by unconditional hospitality. So it's a it's it's both and when it comes to understanding a relationship with the other through hospitality. What this looks like in action for Derrida is a, a relationship between a guest and a host. So the guest approaches, the host awaits uh, in their space. The host and the guests are not positioned as such before the encounter. There is not a ghost or a guest or a host before that moment of encounter. So the host is not a host without a guest and vice versa. Um, host is in their space. They are themselves, but they're not host. They don't have the experience of, uh, of hostness. Uh, the foreigner speaks to the foreigner. In other words, uh, as they move toward each other, they, they don't have roles in relation to each other. It's foreigner, they're stranger. The unknown meets the unknown as the guest approaches and the, and the host is uh, awaits them. Uh, this encounter between them occurs right there at the threshold, the doorway, this liminal space between, uh, between the unknown meets the unknown and the crossing over that threshold moves us into this guest-host relationship. But at that threshold, uh, Derrida sees this as a very violent and threatening place. The host, the act of uh, identifying the guest, he sees as a violent act. It places them under the law. It constrains them. It conditionalizes them. Places under the law the, the idea that uh, now they've been identified and uh, con legal conditions are, are, are such that they are, uh, are based on determinations of, of specifics. So you've now been specified, you now fit under the context of a law, uh, is, is, the, is there his idea of, of one of the ways this is violent. Another is asking the foreigners to speak your language. It constrains them, forces them to act as you see fit. It begs of the beggar to some extent. Um, and then guests 
uh, their very presence is a threat. While while not not inherently violent by simply approaching, it it it, it implies the possibility for violence. Uh, so this is this liminal space is a violent, threatening place. And yet through the encounter with the guest, the host takes their place as master of the space. They come as they've been positioned as host. They become master simultaneously. The guest is treated as if they were the host. Interesting move here. As the host becomes master of the space and owns this space, becomes fully aware of his his power within this space, uh, they then subordinate themselves and the space to the guest. The guest is treated as if they were the host. So the host becomes master, takes control and ownership of the space, and then uh, treats the guest as if, privileges them as the guest. Looking at these different positions, the guest enters into, brings with them this need, uh, a motivating force that moves the guest into this interaction with the host. The host, uh, they're coming to meet this capacity. This host has capacity. It's the full extent of the host's ability to act, whether that's uh, uh, physical, financial, um, uh, 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 whatever it may be. Um, the uh, extent of their knowledge, whatever capacity they have to act is the fullness of their uh, uh, is the fullness of their capacity here. Um, however, once they move into this space, this this is prior to that liminal space. Once they move into this guest host relationship, the host fully uh, moves into it, uh, their capacity, and at that point. They're full. They they are empowered. They have a greater understanding of their capacity as a result of moving into this, being positioned in the host as master of this space. But as master of this space, as host in relation to a guest, this requirement for this thing, they take their capacity and privilege, fulfillment of the host uh, of of um, of the need of the guest. They privilege the guest as if their capacity is theirs and the guest is in fact the host. And so we move into this way of, of the capacity is brought solely toward the guest. Uh, and it is a moment of in doing so, the host is in, experiences empowerment as, as the guest receives this privilege. An interesting dynamic uh, in a comparison uh, between this is the uh, psychological sense of community. There's two factors in here. Uh, out of these four components that um, appear to be very similar. At least they're starting to take, they, they kind of take a similar shape or approach here, is uh, understanding that in this relationship, in this sense of community, uh, we have influence and integration of affirmative needs. We have capacity and needs. So it is a place where people are able to bring, uh, feel safe to move in interaction with the other, interaction between capacity and needs. Um, and then we have this membership, this belonging, and the shared emotional connection, uh, the context framing that dynamic relationship. So in some sense, they move from uh, two unknowns, two foreigners coming to interact. They cross that liminal space and move into a psychological sense of community. They move into a place of community where they are able to uh, bring their needs and capacity into relationship with each other. Now, negotiating to this point is an interesting thing because uh, negotiating to the psychological sense of community and the guest host relationship means getting past and reducing that threat, that liminal space, that violent space. So this negotiation, like I said, it begins in that violence um, and it moves to a sense of community or it doesn't. Um, maybe the door gets slammed in their face um, or they just part ways. Uh, maybe they don't get there. But a person's ethic leads their way of negotiating with the other. So going back to the idea of ethics, it's, it's the, um, the way that a person understands uh, encounters with the other, what, in, what that means or what that is or their relationship to it uh, leads the way, leads their participation in encounters. So it leads their way of negotiating with the other. So a person's ethic uh, comes to play right here in that negotiation. Uh, but interaction is messy. So this is a, 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 a messy uh, 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 moment. 
a messy place to be. Uh, we are imperfect at communicating. This dialogical counter view of communication, we function with sufficient understanding. Words don't have exact meaning. We aren't fully aware of what we're going to say or why we're going to say it before we say it. Speaking transforms the way you think about what you're talking about. The way that we communicate is so inexact. The fact that we communicate at all is truly is a miracle. And the fact that we communicate and then move to a position of psychological sense of community uh, is, is honestly a bit of a miracle. Uh, it, it appears to be that, that what it is is moving to like reducing the idea of this threat, removing it and feeling safe, bringing, uh, getting to position each other through this liminal space and into a safe place. Uh, the sense of community is a sense that this is a space a person can safely bring both their needs and capacity. It's a sense that even that despite they might be in uh, particular roles, a guest or a host, that they may be at another time in the other one, that there's no obligation one way or the other, and they don't, um, uh, but that that is a space that either one could be brought, at least because as a sense, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be true, it has to be understood. Um, or, or sensed, if you will. Uh, the guests, in order for them to even be willing to approach the host, they have to imagine it's possible to negotiate uh, to community. They won't even seek that privilege. They won't seek privilege. They won't seek fulfillment of their needs. They, their need won't uh, move them in that direction if it's imagined to be unsafe. Um, uh, the host has to be freely able to say no. How They cannot be the master they cannot be positioned as, a, as the host if they cannot say no. Someone who can only say yes uh, is not truly the master of their home, whether that's an, a, an obligation somewhere else that, uh, that forces them or removes their ability to say no, whatever it is, if they cannot say no, they, will not, they cannot experience hostness or that host-guest relationship and experience that empowerment. They won't have that sense of uh, feeling safe uh, or being in that sense of uh, community. Um, so within this, what we see here is uh, this ethic of hospitality then is understanding encounter is how we enter into, into this relationship with the other, into, as we move into that negotiation, understanding encounter as a place of empowerment and fulfillment. Going, moving into that space with the other is a place of empowerment and fulfillment. Approaching interaction with the other with the belief that it's possible to negotiate. So first of all, we have to believe it is possible to negotiate to this, we have, we have to know that we can get there. Uh, moving toward the other without coercion and despite the presence of threat. So we're not actively uh, trying to, to harm the other. We're not uh, doing anything to them. They have no reason to fear us. Um, and we're doing it despite that violence and threat. We're moving through it. We're not moving away from it. Uh, encounter as the place to more fully experience the self, the experience of... A, a, of um, the possibility of being the the host, bringing your capacity, uh, experiencing the fullness of your capacity, and bringing it to the to privilege the guest is a place where you more fully experience yourself, or the or have the experience of self. Um, I'm going to contrast this real quick with this idea of an ethic of consumption, which is just basically the contrast uh, to this ethic of hospitality. Um, and uh, this is understanding encounter with the other as inherently destructive experience in which each attempts to consume the other. Um, so to move to the encounter, they have to have a belief that they will be the more destructive rather than it being a place, not only do they know it's not safe, uh, but rather than leaving because it's not safe, it is an assumption that this is how it is done. I could, it is impossible to get to a safe place. I have to get to be the more destructive. I have to be the conqueror. I have to kick in the door. Uh, they use co uh, it's the use of coercion to fill, fulfill needs um, rather than just uh, just bringing to them, bringing to them, and negotiating into that uh, positioning. Uh, exclusion is an aspect of this. As is, in fact, it's the the other side of it. The the, the host will then exclude uh, out of a protection but vice versa uh if you will have um if you have a led by an ethic of consumption and you are encountered exclusion is the response to being approached the door is locked bolted you know shades drawn lights out um so this this is the contrast to this um 
Uh, do, do, do. Okay. So to take a look at this, uh, just to pull uh, a, a small, a short transcript to kind of just do an analysis of the uh, of, of a, a ethical approach in negotiation. Um, I'm looking at episode seven uh, from the TV show, The Book of Boba Fett. Um, it is fiction, but it allows me to demonstrate kind of this process of negotiation right here in this um, encounter between individuals and how they work toward positioning themselves um, in, the, in this kind of guest host uh, relationship um, and move toward the sense of community. So these characters, Mando, Marshall, Weequay. Um, Mando is the is considered to be um, kind of the, the the primary, the one that's kind of making the movement toward the other. Um, the setting of this uh, is the planet of Tatooine in the Star Wars universe. It's uh, plenty of fictional words, which is actually helpful because it it removes the the context of the specific words, and we can kind of just look at the direction that people are moving towards each other in this encounter. Uh, Mando is trying to get the others to come help him in a fight. So he's sh showing up as the guest, uh, and they're negotiating the others into position of host. Uh, so here we'll be looking for hospitality, ethic, motivation, or consumption or exclusion. So looking at this, Marshall in this first line uh, doesn't see what it's got to do with him. Uh, he is, he's, he, the door is closed still. There's been a knock, but he's saying, who's that? What's going on? Mando uh, comes in and says, I need you to leave a garrison. Your people are good fighters. He's, he's giving a information of what I need and why I'm here, why I came to you, why I came to knock on this door. Um, and there's plenty of credits in it for them too. Here's a moment where it seems positive that he's coming to offer something. He's bringing something uh, to the host. But if we go back and look at the guest host relationship is actually once that positioning moves, the host moves their full capacity to favor the guest as the host, as if, as if they are the host um, to, to bring another dynamic of capacity to some extent to, 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 to have the guest treat the host as guest. And then the host treat the, it, the, it creates a cycle that is is actually a coercive situation and not this concept, this ethic of hospitality. Uh, it's not led from a place of conditional hospitality. It's telling him he can put more them to that they should they should put more uh, conditions on. It's an ethic of consumption. Marshall responds uh, and is still excluding. Mando comes back. This next line: Your town might be good for now. Uh, it's bound to, you know, Spice is bound to come back through these parts. He starts to threaten him, not directly, but with the access of saying, hey, you got to do something now or else. Uh, Marshall comes back and says, why should we risk their lives for this Boba Fett? He's, he's still excluding, excluding. He's protecting himself. Moss Pelgo might be good right now, Mando says in the next line. And this is a movement still. He's, he's coming in with hard with this um, uh, ex uh, consumption ethic. This character, Weeke, inter interjects Freetown. It disrupts this flow and action of this this back and forth between this consumption and exclusion ethics, uh, and, and it confuses Mando for a second. Uh, he, it the conversation is now shifted. An interesting thing happens here that their their interaction actually shifts into um, into a wonderful, open, freely interacting uh, conversation led by an ethic of hospitality. Uh, what? And then the response is given. He asks, what did, what did he mean? It's called Freetown. He gets an explanation. And Weekway actually comes in and responds to, we change the name, suits us better, to unspoken questions, like giving, you know, giving the fullness, uh, privileging, not, not forcing him to wait and or correspond or withhold, is giving. They're, they're actually giving in this moment. They've actually made a shift, but the threat of this conversation is so significantly lower that they're able to move easily into that space. There, there's significantly less tension there. Uh, Mando, uh, though, as they move back, he says, well, we fought side by side and they're brave people and uh, y'all are brave people. These people have us outnumbered. We need your help. He actually continues and, and brings the same hospitality approach back into the, the highly threatening um, interaction This uh, as they shift back into this other encounter. Uh, and 
He's saying we have a shared contact. We have shared emotional connection. You are good. I'm here. We're in an issue and I need your help. I'm not, he's not coercing. There's not an element of force behind what he's saying. He's positioning, he says, I need your help. I need, uh, I I'm here for help. We Quay has having none of this. That's a city folk fight. Uh, he still continues seeing uh, the threat that is on his front steps. Mando, is that what you have to say to Marshall? Moving over here. An interesting move here happens where Marshall says, we're square, you and me. Uh, this dynamic, uh, um, I'm, I'm curious. I, I think that this, this line, we're square, you and me, because that has nothing to do with I mean, he's saying, I don't owe you anything, but that's not what Mando was saying. He's not responding to Mando. He's responding instead to Weequay. The town wants no part of this. Uh, he's, he's, um, he's stepping back as the host and saying, the host, who's, who's got the power here? Who's, who would be the uh, one who decides whether to exclude is actually Weequay? Is washing his hands of the situation where square you and me, it's not my job anymore. And it's interesting, I want to point out here, what that means is like uh, that no encounter happens in a vacuum. It, it, we are not, we do not simply, it's not simply the guest and host negotiating the position. It is also um, our influences around us. And sometimes whether it's our culture, whether it's actual other people, whether it's a situation or, or, or just our, our basic understanding, whatever it is, that we also have, have that, we bring that into our ability to negotiate as well. Um, and so that, can, that, that impacts uh, the way we are able to move into that, through that uh, threatening space with others. Uh, Mando comes back. I didn't think you were to back down from bullies, ironically bullying him himself. Um, and of course, Marshall comes back with sarcasm and says, I exclude right back in there. Uh, we're excluding um, Mando. Then there's a beat, and the energy drains from him, and he recognizes, uh, "I, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm defeated," uh, and simply says, "There is no easy way to ask for a favor." And this transition, where he moves in back into this space and says, "This is an ethic of hospitality," coming across and saying encountering them. I'm not threatening. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to take your stuff. I'm asking, can you help me? Uh, and, it, and it works. It's in that moment where uh, Mando help, like, like they enter into this, the threat is reduced. And uh, Marshall finally feels like he can say no. And in being able to say no, he takes ownership of his space. Um, He's the one who sets uh, the limits of this interaction, becomes the host in this host-guest relationship. Tell you what, things are tough around here, but I'll see what I can do. He leans into his capacity, finds ownership, and then move on and privileges Mando. So this is, this is just an example of a way to like look at the, the movement of ethics in the encounter right there in this, uh, this space as, we, as people are encountering the other and moving into, seeing if they can move into, over, past the threat and into a sense of community with each other. Uh, the last thing I wanna to touch on is just a couple other interesting ways to think about applying um, this view of ethics and this guest host relationship in other, in other ways. Uh, first is what, what kind of ethics lead our systems, whether it's capitalism, um, I mean, our, our economic system, of course, is 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 absolutely an ethic of consumption. Uh, foundationally, what would it what would it mean to have an economic system that's based on an ethic of hospitality, um, uh, or that at the very least moves closer toward an idea of reinforcing and supporting these ideas and helping people move uh, through those spaces together uh, it, uh, through the threat, past the threat, and into uh, safe. Uh, sense of community with the other. Uh, organization of care, uh, whether it's the government or a nonprofit, the person cannot be a host. They're simply receiving from their needs. And, and to some extent, this is encouraging um, or reinforcing an idea of how do I go interact with people? Um, uh, I have to do it by coming in demanding as much as I can. I mean, that's not, that's not a, that, that, uh, the a full extent of what happens in these organizations, but because they, the, the form of them 
it still has an uh, a uh, an understanding of interaction with within this kind of un, uh, ethic of consumption to some extent that people are there. We're providing things for people to consume. People are going to come and take. This is the this is the uh, the way that this functions. Uh, it's not a place where the people who come would ever be host, and so there's not going to be a sense of community within that. Um, and so our idea of care sort of moves away from the idea of connection, moves away from um, from people from empowering people because they never have that opportunity to be the host and to use their capacity. Um, culture shortcuts uh, to 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 move into this sense of community. Words like you know just like please and thank you, like the ways that our culture, um, the way in our culture we create shortcuts to be able to move into the sense of community and safety uh, with others. Um, it's fascinating to think about the way that, that that happens and then the ways that it gets thwarted and turned into um, uh, ethics of consumption. And then other shortcuts, which um, are quick ways for people to uh, move or, or, or are also influenced by uh, ethic of consumption. Um, the environment, what would it mean for us to be in a guest host relationship in the sense of community with the natural world? What, how do I host the natural world? How can they, uh, they it, we, the you, uh, host me? How can I be a guest in this natural world and not come at it with a consumption, con, consump effect, uh, consumption ethic, an ethic of consumption? Um, and the last point I want to talk real quick is just uh, talk about how does one's view of self interact with encounter? If if a view, if I have the like an individualistic, atomistic uh, view of self, um, mutual becoming is described as the process of of ethics. This interaction with others, um, this encounter, uh, mutual becoming would then be experienced as destructive. Um, and if that's my understanding, that mutual becoming is bad for me and I, it's an, it happens within an encounter with another, then I understand encounter as inherently destructive. Um, relational uh, view of self, on the other hand, mutual becoming is normal. This is the process. This is how, um, how I am constituted and how I continue to be constituted uh, and experience the self. And so uh, it would be interesting to see how much views uh, one's view of self um, uh, impacts the way that they interact with encounter. Well, that is my presentation. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we hope to see you all at um, the events at Spark. Thank you so much.